What's up, YouTube? It's Lions Fan Express coming at you with that man-to-man -man press. And the Detroit Lions beat the Minnesota Vikings 30-20 to to clinch the number three seed in the NFC playoffs. But like Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet, it came at a cost. Here are my takeaways from the game, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So starting off with coaching, Dan Campbell continues to be aggressive with play calling and decisions going forward on several occasions and even continuing to throw the ball when they're up by 10. The defense has no timeouts with only a minute left. Most coaches would probably just take a knee. Uh, Dan Campbell, you know, I think he was trying to send a message not just to the Vikings, but to the league that they're not going to quit. They're not going to back down. Um, even after controversial calls, they're not going to let that get to them. They're just going to keep doing what they do. Uh, so that was one thing I kind of noticed. Another thing is... Um, I think he's got to get better with his challenges. According to Sports Reference, he is three for eight on his 11 challenges the last three seasons as a Detroit Lions head coach. Now, I get it. You have to have indisputable evidence to overturn that. And if you have a timeout to burn and it's a 50-50 shot, you might as well take it. Um, see if it'll come, uh, re, you know, overturn and come your way. But uh, unfortunately, that has not been the case. Definitely going to have to clean that up heading into the playoffs. But you know, Dan Campbell, again, that's part of his aggressiveness. And, you know, sometimes it pays off, and they definitely got the win today. But did his gamble to play his starters pay off in the long run? So looking at it from the offensive side of the ball, statistically, Goff was quietly efficient today. Um, you know, he didn't make any real uh, turnover, like, throws or anything like that, except for maybe one that was probably really should have been picked, but it was dropped. Um you know, but for the most part, you know, he got all of his receivers involved. San Laporta broke the rookie tight end reception record, which was the good news. Um, Jameer Gibbs and Monty, they only had 70 yards combined. You know, they did not have a good day of running the football, and that's just not like the Detroit Lions. They usually are very run heavy, efficient with that. However, honestly, I thought the offensive line, while they did a good, fairly good job pass pro, they struggled to get just push in the run game. They were kind of not allowing the running backs to have, you know, good holes to run through. And it was just really just stifled and stifled and wasn't, it just wasn't there. Um, but still 30 points is still 30 points. And honestly, I'll take 30 points almost every time, unless the defense decides to give up more than 30 points, which has happened this season. Speaking of the defense, they held the Vikings to only 89 yards rushing which is pretty good, you know, and it was good to see, you know, number 54, Aleem, or like the commentators were saying, Cupcake McNeil <laughs> back out there on the field. You know, you could just, you could see his presence out there, man. He, he just was definitely wreaking havoc and disrupting, um, getting into the backfield and holding his own in, uh, in the run defense. And honestly, the defensive line in general, there was a decent pass rush, uh, mainly from Aiden Hutchinson, who finished the regular season with 11 and a half sacks. And also from the linebacking spot, you had Anzalone and Campbell, and even Derek Barnes to an extent, were flying around making tackles. Um, but while the front seven held their own for the most part in the run game, run defense, the secondary for the third straight game gave up over 150 receiving yards to the other team's superstar receiver. Now I get it. Superstar receivers, they're going to do superstar receiver stuff, and you know, they're going to make catches. They're going to, you know, do the toe drag swag. They're going to get open. They're going to put up yards. But it's just, it's frustrating because that is the third straight game. And that's just, yes, Cam Sutton, he had a pick. You know who also had a pick? CJ Gardner Johnson. And it was good to see him back on the field as well. And that was a game ceiling pick. And you like to see that it was in kind of garbage time, but it showed that, you know, the defense, while they were bending a lot during the game, they didn't break. But we need cornerback help so bad. I mean, when you look at it from a defensive standpoint, Aaron Glenn's defense has made some improvements this year, specifically in the run defense. But after three years, he's, we still can't defend the pass. I mean, we don't have a number one cornerback. And we can't stop the other team's number one, you know, receiving option. And honestly, it, it just makes you want, like just hope that we don't play a, a team in the playoffs that has a Super Bowl winning quarterback and an offensive player of the year 
Oh, and also a rookie wideout of the year, potentially. <laughs> I mean, all jokes aside, this defense was good enough to beat a Nick Mullins-led Vikings team. Nick Mullins is also, by the way, the fourth starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings this year. Just thought I'd point that out. But can it rise to the occasion and stop a legitimate offense? 396 yards for Nick Mullins. That's not good. Unfortunately, there is some ugly that we have to talk about, and that is injuries. The aggressiveness to start your players, um, you got the win. Unfortunately, one of our star players was injured. Sam Laporta reportedly hyperextended his knee, and he also had a bone bruise as well, I believe. Honestly, I'm not a trainer. I'm not a doctor. I don't know how long he has to recover or how, like, how severe it is. I think we'll know more information um, tomorrow. But depending on the severity, typically hyperextended knees, injuries kind of take a couple weeks to recover which i mean for a normal person oh yeah okay you maybe you miss you know a couple weeks of work that's potentially you know the whole playoffs for us um not having sam laporta and that's 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 a huge blow um he's a critical part of our offense and that's another per, you know personnel that the other team doesn't have to scheme around or scheme against because we're not going to have him on the um on the field so Unfortunate to see that. Also, Anzalone seemed to be banged up a little bit, but he got up and was playing. Khalif Raymond also injured his ankle after a monster day of returns. Man, I love to see him just run with the ball. He's just so, he's so quick. He's so agile. Um, and again, it's not up to me to say Dan Campbell shouldn't, shouldn't or should play his starters today. But the question is, we won, but at what cost? So what's next? Well, the Lions will have a week to prepare um, to host the LA Rams. And that's going to be a lot of headlines, a lot of emotions, good and bad, and agendas with that matchup. But before I get ahead of myself, I'm gonna save that for another video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching the Lions this season. 12 and five, man, and an NFC North championship. But like Kobe once said, the job's not finished and there is still more Lions football to be played as well. So if you guys like the video, make sure you hit the sub for more content. And as always, stay hungry, Lions fans.